Uh, today, amen, we praise God on this morning. I want to ask you to turn with me to Romans chapter 8. And we're going to look at verses 35 through 39 in Romans 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39. God's going to talk to us today uh, and encourage our hearts. And the title of our message today, I want to write it down after you get to Romans 8. The title is, God Loves You and Always Will. Amen. God loves you and always will. And we're going to find encouragement for this in Romans chapter 8. Verses 35 through 39. And this comes on the heels of last week. We were looking at the body and the blood of Jesus Christ and, and uh, God calling us to communion. And not something that we do once a month, but as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup. Amen. And it says you can do it and we can do it as often as we want to if we do it with the right heart. And so God is calling us to a place of closer fellowship with him. Amen. And on the heels of that, he's telling us this week that he loves you and always will. Yeah. Amen. Uh, God loves you and always will. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen for the word. Let's pray over it now. Father, we bless you now for the scriptures that we have just read. We thank you, God, that this is your holy word. We thank you, God, that all your words, everything you speak, all your promises are yea and amen. And so we come to your word right now in faith. We ask you to open our eyes that we may see even the more. Bless our hearts to receive even the more. Father God, bring us to a new place of revelation today in the name of Jesus Christ. Set us all free, O oh God, free to pursue that great destiny that you have for each one of us. Yes. Father, let your word come alive today in the name of Jesus. And Father, we bless you right now for all that you're going to do by your spirit and by your awesome power. Father, right now I humble myself under your hand. Fill my mouth with your words, O oh God. Use me for your glory. Hallelujah. Father, may your people be blessed. May your people hear your voice. May your people see your face. May your people come away with everything that you have for them on today. We turn everything into your hands now, God. Hallelujah. Transform lives. Do it, God. Do it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, that we could continue to give your name the praise and bless you forever. Father, we thank you right now. We call it done by faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God loves you and always will. Amen. It is, it is liberating, and, but it's also necessary for all of us who call on Jesus as Lord to understand that God loves you. Amen. Um, it's important that, you know, the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God loves the world. Yeah. He, looks at, he looks at the world and he loves the world. Mm -hmm. And he wants, though, that every man, every woman, every child come to him through Jesus Christ. That's his heart's desire. The Bible says that God doesn't desire that anyone should perish. That's right. 
But he wants all to come to repentance through Jesus Christ. Yeah. And as born again believers, it's amazing how many walk around and they are discouraged in their heart because of how other people either feel about them or how they perceive other people feel about them. Mm -hmm. A lot of us try to walk around and act as if we're strong and as if we don't, you know, well, if I have a good self-esteem, I'll be okay. But a lot of us, God didn't create us to, to operate in a vacuum. Amen. And so we, we really do, as much as we try to say, you know, some people say, I don't care about what other people say. I don't care what other people think. No, we care. Yeah, we care. It, you know, the people around you, now you may not care about everybody, but there are people in your life who mean something to you. And how they feel about you and how they think about you matters to you. And people sometimes will think things of you that are helpful and will build you up and make you strong. And sometimes they will think things about you and say things about you and treat you in a way that will bring you down. And make you doubt yourself and make you feel bad. But when things like that happen, we have to understand something. God loves you, yeah. and he always will love you. Yeah. Yeah. And so even when you do some things that other people may disapprove of, mm -hmm. that other people may criticize, that other people may judge you for, God looks at you, and he continues to love you. That's right. That's right. Amen. And, and, and that, if we can get that in our spirit, in our heart, then when other people sort of treat us in a way for a season or however long it may be, and, 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 and it's not helpful to us, we can still stand strong because we're standing in the love of God. Yeah, I, I, yeah you may not like me, but God loves me. Amen. Yeah, you may be mad at me, but God is smiling down upon me. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you used to love me, and now you walked out of my life but God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes, that's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. I, I just think about all the men. Because sometimes we think about women are the only ones that get walked out on. Now, men do more walking, mm -hmm. I think, than women do. Mm -hmm. Men, they, they, they got, yeah, they walk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they walk out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But, you know, women walk too now. But whether you're a man or a woman and someone has walked out on you, God said, I'm never going to do that. Amen. I'm never going to walk out on you. Amen. Uh, younger people, children, amen. Maybe a mom or a dad or somebody else walked out on you. But God said, I'm not going to walk out on you. Amen. Amen. I, why? Because I love you. And I always will. Let's look at the scripture and hear God says, say it in his own words. In verse 35 of Romans chapter 8, Paul asks a question. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Amen. I can tell you right now, you can, you can sense the answer in your spirit. The answer is no one. No one can separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus loves you with an everlasting love. And there's no woman, there's no man, there's no child on earth, there's no demon in hell who can separate you and Jesus' love for you. Amen. amen. You can't even do it. Amen. Jesus' love is on you. Uh, amen. Like, like uh, when I used to say when I was a kid, when something was all over something, they said like white on white. Do you remember that? Yeah. That's for the old side of the room. <laughs> See, this side of the room remembers that, Timothy. Y'all don't remember that. We, we, don't, we, don't, we don't say corny things like We don't say corny things like that. I'm on this side now. We don't say corny things like that. They corny side over there. They say anything like white on right. I never said it, but I heard about it, Brother Joe. I heard about it. Yeah. I think Brother James was telling me this uh, last week. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was. But, you know, there was that saying, right? Like, while well, I mean, it was totally covered. Yes. Well, that's how God's love is for you. Amen. 
Amen. It's just totally all, all on you. And, and there's nothing, there's no one who can separate the love that Jesus has for you. That's right. Amen. And so Paul says, who can do it? Who can do it? And then he starts naming some things. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. Mm. And when you look at this, amen, tribulation is, is hard, it, it, it problems. It's trouble. Amen. And Jesus said that in this life, you and I shall have tribulation. But then he said, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Yes. yes. And one of the reasons we can be of good cheer is because Jesus overcome the world. And no matter how much tribulation we have, that tribulation won't overcome us. Amen. 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 That tribulation is not going to overcome us. Though that problem you have right now is not big enough for you. It can't take you out. That trouble that you have right now, it, it can't take you out. And I know the devil messes with our minds and tries to magnify the problem. You're never going to get out of this situation. But how many of you know the devil is a liar? And, and the problem that you may be facing right now, God, your God is bigger than your problem. Amen. Right? So, so your problem is not strong enough to separate you from the love of Christ. Amen. amen? It, it, it won't. Amen. Yeah. So if you have a problem right now, and, 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 and who doesn't? Amen. We all walk around with something that we're dealing with. Yeah. We got some issue, some trouble, some problem that we are dealing with. Yes. But if Jesus is your Savior, then he's your shepherd. And, and, yes. and, and, and Psalm 23 says he makes you yes. to lie down in green pastures. Yes. See, that, that, that's, see, there's problems over here, but he said, I'm going to make you lie down yes, in green sir. pastures. Yes. Amen. And how many of you know lying down is a position of rest? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of us, we have problems and we get busy trying to fix it. Yes. But, but, but see, there is a rest for the people of God. Yes, yes. And we have to labor to enter into the rest. Mm. Amen. Come unto me, those who uh, are, are heavy laden. Amen. You got all those burdens yes. on you. And what Jesus said? He said what? He said, and I will give you rest. rest. Amen. I will make you lie down. Yes. See, because some of us don't want to lie down. No. It, it's like, it's like, you know, when all of us, some of us with kids, you know, and, or we had kids, and, 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 and you know how sometimes you try to get that kid to go to bed? Yeah. I'm not talking about the kid that's like, you know, five, six, seven. I'm talking about that kid that's like six, seven months. Wow. And they keep getting up out the crib. <laughs> and you got to make them lie down, you know what I mean? Huh? You got to make them lie down. Why? Because they don't want to lie down. Some of us are like that. We don't want to lie down. That's why the scripture said, I will make you lie down in green pastures. Amen. Amen. Wow. God is going to make us lie down because we want to get up and put our hands to the stuff. We want to get up and fix it. Yeah. We want to we want to stay up late and get up early. But we Psalm 112, 112, it talks, not 112, 127, it talks about that it's vain for you to stay up late and get up early trying to fix your problem. Mm. It says, unless God build the house. The labor labors in vain. Unless God is watching the village, yes. the watchman watches in vain. Yes. What makes you think that you watching your problem going to fix your problem? Yes. If God's not involved, your problem's not going to be fixed. Yes. The scripture said we serve a God who neither slumbers nor sleeps. God's going to stay up all night. So if he's going to stay up all night, I'm going to bed. Amen. Amen. Ain't no, no, use, no use both of us staying up. Exactly. Right, Italy? I'm going to sleep. Amen. 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 But, but God says he's going to do it. He said, I'll make you lie down in green pastures. I'll lead you beside the still waters. I'll restore your soul. I'll lead you in paths of righteousness for my name's sake. So when trouble comes, we have to understand this is the God that we serve, but he loves us. He's going to give us green pastures. He's going to still waters. Amen. He's going to restore us and strengthen us. Why? Because he loves us. So that trouble can't overcome you. If you have a problem right now, it doesn't matter that you can't see your way out of it. Just see your God in it and say this. Yes. That problem 
is not big enough for my God. Amen. Amen. That, that problem is not going to overcome me. I am going to overcome this problem Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Shall tribulation? No. What about distress? Distress is nothing but hard times. See, you live long enough, you fall on some hard times. Oh, there's times when things go well, and then there's times. But if you live long enough, you will encounter some hard yeah. times. Amen. 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 But hard times can't take you out. I want to read something in your hearing. You can write the scripture down, and you can look at it later. I'm going to read it to your hearing. It's Psalm number 66, and it's verse number 12. Psalm 66 and 12. And it says this, it says, Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou brought us out into a wealthy place. Yeah. See, you and I may go through some fire, yes, we may go through some water, we may go through some tight places, we may go through some uncomfortable places. Yeah. But the psalmist said, but Lord, you brought me out into a wealthy place. You brought me out to a place of abundance. Amen. So listen, I want you to know God has a wealthy place for you. Amen. He has a place of abundance that's just for you. Why? Because he loves you. And so as you go through those hard times, please understand, that's not your ultimate destination. God did not save you and, and, and Jesus didn't go to the cross for you so that you can end up and end up in a hard place. Yes. Oh, you're going to go through a hard place, but you're not going to end up there. Amen. It doesn't end like this. Amen. Amen. There's a wealthy place in my future. There is a place of abundance in my future. There is a place of plenty in my future. Yes. That's what God wants to hear you saying out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. When you're going through that hard time, there's a place of plenty in my future. Yes. So the hard time is not going to take you out. Mm -hmm. What about persecution? Is persecution able to take you out? No. no. And some of us say, well, I don't get persecuted, but think about this. What about this? Or, is anybody hating on you? Oh, yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now we can start talking, amen? <laughs> huh? Because now we understand there's some haters in the midst. Yeah. Yeah. There's some haters around us. There's some people who, I, I know you're nice. I know you're pretty. I know you're handsome. I, I, I know you have nice clothes on. I, I know you smell good. I, I know you do good things in the church. But there's some people who don't like you. They don't believe you, Lord. Let me say it again. There are some people who don't like you. Amen. Amen. That's true. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Two is the number of the witness, amen. Yeah. So I had to say it twice. <laughs> to bear witness to the truth. There are some people who don't like you. Amen. 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 That's okay. That's okay. There's some people who may view themselves, you may not view them, or maybe you do, as enemies. But God says something. He said, I'm going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. That's right. I will tell you this. That's why I don't, don't spend so much time trying to chase your enemies away. Amen. Because you chase your enemies away, you're chasing your table away too, amen. That's right. Because your table only going to be where your enemies are, amen. amen. And you want to get away from your enemies so much, but you're getting away from your table too. Yes. Amen. So keep your enemies, you know, because it says, listen, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. But you got to know who your enemies are. But see, the Bible says that Paul says in Romans chapter 12, and since we're there, if you want to turn there, Romans chapter 12, verse number 20. <laughs> Paul says, if your enemy is hungry, <laughs> what should you do? Feed him. Now, I know somebody right there saying, <laughs> my enemy hungry? I'm going to eat a sandwich in front of his face <laughs> and laugh at him. <laughs> Mm 
That's what they say on that side of the room over there. <laughs> on this side of the room, we don't say that. <laughs> but you know, have there ever been a time where you wanted to get back at somebody? Yes. And God knows that's our natural inclination. Yes. But see, God is not calling us to be natural. He's calling us to be supernatural. He's not calling us to be natural. He's calling us to be spiritual. Yes. And so when your enemy is hungry, God says, feed him. When people do bad to you, God says, do good to them. Yes. When people curse you, God says, bless them. Amen. And so look at this and see, this is where people in, in, in our society have to understand some things sometimes about the Bible. Because look at this. Look at this. It says, therefore, if your enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. And see, people in this country, you know what they do with that? They say, oh, he pulled the fire on his head? Good, I'll burn him up. <laughs> <laughs> he my enemy. Good, I'll burn him up. God allow me to throw coals on your head. <laughs> How many of you know that's not what that scripture means? No, no, it's not. <laughs> and actually, this comes from Proverbs chapter 25, verses 21 and 22. And you got to understand, Bible times, amen, that everything was carried on the head. Bread, food, right? See, even now, sometimes you see in other parts of the world, people walk down the roads, and they just have a basket on their head, and they just walk like this. They walk with better posture than we do, and we're not even carrying anything. Exactly. And they're walking around with something on top of their head. Groceries, water, right? And, and... And people walk, there was a thing called, there was a thing called, I got to get this right, abrasion, which was, you would put, it was a hot metal, it was a, a metal plate, and, and, and with, which you could put coals on top of, that you use for cooking. And if you ran out of hot coals, you would go to your neighbor to get some coal. And the thing was, if your neighbor wanted to be generous, as you walk by the house and somebody else wanted to be generous, they would heat coals of fire on your head. They weren't burning you up. They were doing a good thing for you because you needed some coal to go back home and cook. So if you put coals of fire on somebody's head, you were helping them. So when you read this scripture and say, I can heat coals of fire on them, God's not giving you license to burn somebody up. Amen. <laughs> He's actually talking about you doing something good for someone. Isn't that in keeping with the rest of the scripture? It's amazing. How can we look at a scripture to say, if you're hungry, feed them. If you're thirsty, give them drink. For in so doing, you'll burn them up. <laughs> it doesn't even fit. <laughs> right? For in so doing, you'll be doing something good for them. Amen. 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 So listen, so, so when, when, when people are, are, are hating on us or persecuting us, can that separate us from the love of God? No. no. As long as we keep doing what God says. Amen. We forgive people. Amen. And, and, and we give to them and we feed them and we clothe them and we do those types of things even though we know they don't like us. Amen. amen. You still give them a ride even though you know they wouldn't give you a ride. Amen. If your car was broke down. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You still do nice things for them. Why? Because, see, see, you're not going to let them hating on you stop the love of God that you receive Amen. from operating in your life. Amen. And too many times we make that mistake. Yes. We know someone doesn't like us, and we get out of the spirit of God, and we start acting like our old self. Yes. We start saying foolish things like, I ain't been saved my whole life. You keep messing with me, and I'll show you something. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Where we need to stay Amen. and realize, no, you know what? You don't like me, but God loves me yes. and always will. And yes. so I don't have to fight this battle yes. and I don't have to fight you. I can still treat you nice and know that God's going to bless me. Because if yes. you go to Proverbs 20, 25, verse 21 and 22, you'll see the same scripture that Paul talked about. Right? By so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. And then it ends this way. And the Lord will reward you. Yes. So this is why you don't have to try to get them back. Yes. Keep doing what's right. Yes. Don't let them and that, and that hatred or that dislike they have for you separate you from operating in God's love. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Because a reward is awaiting you. Amen. If you continue to stay there. And these people who hate on you can't separate you from God's love. Well, what's the next thing? It says, can famine or nakedness separate you from God's love? You know what that's, that is? Famine, you don't have enough food. Nakedness, you don't have enough clothes. That's really saying you have lack. Amen. But we, how many of you know, we serve a God who will turn not enough into more than enough. Amen. Isn't that what he did with the two fish and five loaves of bread? Yes. There wasn't enough food to feed all those people. Jesus, where are we going to get enough food? Send them away. Jesus said, no, I'm not sending them away. You feed them. How are we going to feed them, Jesus? All we have is two fish and five loaves of bread. You know what? Make everybody sit down. And then he made everybody, they all sat down, and what did Jesus do? He took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and what happened? Everybody ate. Everybody. Over 15,000 people, when you count the women and children, had a fish sandwich that day, amen? Exactly. And the Gospel of Mark gives proof that your cousins were there, because it says that they <laughs> ate as much as they wanted. And you know you got that cousin who never can stop at one place. <laughs> <laughs> Your cousins is in the Bible if you read closely. Amen. You go, that's my cousin. I know that's him. He asked for Jesus. Can I some more? Three times you went up there to get some fish and bread. But the Bible says that they have more than enough. How do you know more than enough? Because they had 12 baskets full left over. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So can, can your, if you're in a current situation where you don't have enough, you should, listen, you God loves you and always will. He will turn your not enough into more than enough. Yeah, praise Amen. God. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God will turn your not enough into more than enough. Yeah. And here's the thing I love about God, that he doesn't just give you more, because that's just quantity. He will also increase the quality. Yeah. He will turn water to wine. Yeah. Oh, you can drink water. But if you want to drink some water, he'll turn water into wine. And remember the, the, the governor of the feast said, he said, this is not even just wine. He said, this is the best wine. Yeah, yes. exactly. Amen. And so, so God's love for us is such that, listen, I, we've all gone through some ups and downs, haven't we? Mm -hmm. yeah. Have there been times where you had more than enough in terms of some money and time on your hands, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you were throwing parties at your house and having people come over and stuff, or you're going to the mall, you're enjoying yourself. That's fine. Mm -hmm. And had there been times, and I know we're going to get some amens on this, when you didn't have enough money. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Yes. We don't know how the bill going to get paid. Yes, sir. But the only time you go to the mall is to cool off in the sun. <laughs> hey! <laughs> yes, yes. Amen. Come on, man. Yes. <laughs> So we go through ups and downs, amen. Yeah. Life is not a bed of roses, for even for people yeah. who are saved. That's right. Amen. But glory to God. Yeah. God says, he says, listen, don't worry. Famine or nakedness can't separate my love from you. Right. So when, when we're going through those lean times, don't ever get to the point where you question God's love for you. God still loves you in the lean times. Yes. Yes. And, and God's going to love you in the lean times, through the lean times, take you out of the lean times, and bring you into a time of abundance. Yes. Yes. Amen? Why? Because he loves you. And, and, and as Jesus said, he said, what father is there, is there among you? Uh -huh. If your son asks you for a piece of bread, amen? You're going to give, or an egg, you're going to give him a scorpion. Mm. Right? Who, he, said, he said, you guys know how to give good gifts. So you know your, that, that our Heavenly Father is not going to allow us to stay in that situation oh, and just, you know, shrug his shoulders like, yeah. well, oh well. No, oh well, anything. God loves you. He always will. And he's going to bring you through that. Praise but Lord. continue to have faith in the middle of that situation. Yes. Amen. Don't let that lack, don't let that hard time, don't let the, the distress or the persecution separate you from God. Yes. And think that somehow God doesn't care for you. God said, my love is all over you, especially right now. Yes. And then it ends up by saying, or well, peril or sword. You know what that is? Peril or sword? Peril is danger. And I take sword as being a threat. You ever been threatened? Mm -hmm. you, uh, see? You been threatened? See, God, God knows. And God 
protects us yes, when other people yes. try to threaten us. Yes. Amen. And God protects us in danger. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for one reason, for thou art with me. See, when we go through some stuff, God is with me. So if you want to challenge me and you want to threaten me and you want to put me in there, I'm going to kick you out of your house if you don't pay the bill by 5 o'clock tomorrow. You threatening me? Okay. I, God is with me. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. His love's not going to be separated by your threat. Oh, there's some people who be separated, amen. Remember when, when they come and they arrested Jesus? Yeah. When they arrested, all the disciples started running. Took off. Mm -hmm. They took off running. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. People will get separated from you when you get threatened. <laughs> yes, they will. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ask Gideon. God said, tell everybody who's scared to go home. <laughs> 22,000 people went home. Uh -huh. yes. 22,000 out of 32,000 went home. Why? Because they were scared. There's some people, man, when, 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 when things hit the fan, oh, they run in the other direction. Oh, yeah. They will run away. But when stuff happens with us, God stands right there with us. Amen. Thou art with me. Yes. Amen. Amen. And Paul said, listen, he said, when, when I had to go into that city with all those enemies, he said, was not one man that stood with me. Mm -hmm. But God was with me. Amen. Yeah. And how many of you know, if God be for you, who can be against you? Right. You are going to prevail. All you need is God on your side. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, can, can peril a thing? No. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yes, sir. See, that, that's good scripture when someone tells you something. You better do this, but the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yeah, that's right. Mm. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> David said, and he went on to say, he said, when a host encamps against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. Yes, yes. yes. See, that's how God wants us to be. Because, see, you can only be that way, though, when you know God loves you. That's right. Because if you know God loves you, you know that God's with you. Yeah. And if God's with you, you know you can prevail. So you can say, the war rise against me. In this will I be confident. Amen. That's right. Come on, somebody. Though a lawsuit rise against me, in this will I be confident. Though a foreclosure notice rise against me, in this will I be confident. That's right. Yes, sir. Why? Because God loves me, and he always will. Amen. And so it goes on. As it is written, verse 36, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, amen, in the trouble, in the hard times, in the persecution, in the lack, in the danger, in the, in the midst of threats, what are we? More than conquerors. Through what? Through him who loves us. It's his love that brings us through these things. That we know God loves me and he's not going to abandon me. God loves me and he's not going to leave me here. God loves me and he has a good plan for me and for my life. Amen. And because of that, I can conquer all these things. But Paul didn't stop there. He then said, well, I am persuaded. I am. Now, we can look at Paul and say he's persuaded, but we have to ask our question, am I persuaded? Mm -hmm. To be persuaded means that you've had your mind changed. That you have one opinion, but now you hold the opinion of somebody else. In other words, you convinced me. I, didn't, I wasn't thinking like this before, but now I'm persuaded. Yes. Now you convinced me. I didn't, I didn't think this way before, but I'm persuaded now. And look what he says I'm persuaded by. He said, I'm persuaded that certain things can't separate me from God. He said, death can't separate me from God. You know what he says? That God doesn't stop loving me. Because I die or someone in my life dies. 
Some people believe that if God going to love me until the third, then when I'm dead, he doesn't care. But the Bible says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Amen. God cares for you, amen? Listen, if God, God loves you with an everlasting love, that's what he said in Jeremiah. I've loved you with an everlasting love. How many of you know, God loved you before you got here. That's right. Amen. That's right. He said, before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. Yes. God knew you before you got here. God loved you before you got here. Yes. God loved you once you got here. And God's going to love you as you leave here. Amen. Yes. God's love is on you from beginning yes. until the end. Yes. Death cannot separate his love that he has for you. Yes. Yes. So Paul says, I'm persuaded. Death can't separate me from the love of God. Then he says something interesting. He says, neither death nor life. Life? Yeah, life. You know how sometimes life gets hard? Life is overwhelming? Life is so troubling that sometimes you think God's not even there? Yes. You ever go through life sometimes and say, Lord, do you even care? Yes. Do you be like the disciples on the boat? Who that, you know, is in the middle of the boat and, and there's a storm going on and, and the ship is getting filled with water and, and, and everybody's scared and Jesus sitting there is laying down there sleeping. <laughs> and they go and they wake Jesus up. What do they say? Don't you care. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Don't you care? We're about to die. Yeah. You ever feel like that? You ever been going through storms in your own life and you were just convinced God was just leaving you in yes. Yes. That he felt so far away? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love people who say, God's always right next to me. I wish that could be my testimony. Mm -hmm. But there are so many different times in my life where God has seen. You know what I'm what I said? He wasn't. But he seemed far away. Yes. yes. There were times when I was talking to God and I felt like I'm lifting my eye and my prayers were just going up, up, up into... Amen? Yeah. And to just nothingness. Yeah. It seemed that it way. Seems yeah. like but sometimes life can get so hard that it seems like God doesn't care. But I don't care how hard your life ever gets. It can't separate you from God's love. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Your problems, your storm, Jesus is just waiting for you to have faith in him to say, peace, be still. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 He's walking on the water. We talked about that the other day. He's walking on the water and he's pretending like he's going to keep walking by. Yeah. And he looks at the corner of his eye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And he's waiting to see if you're going to call on him. Yeah. He's waiting to see if you're going to say, Jesus! Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't wait, but he, he is looking like this. He act like he's walking by. He act like he don't see. Amen. Mm -hmm. But he want to know, do you, are you going to call on me? Peter walked on water, and when he sunk, he only he prayed two words: "Lord, save me!" Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's it. <laughs> I don't care how hard life gets; can't separate you from the love of God. Yeah. Now he says, "Nor angels, nor principalities." Yeah. Know what he's saying? Spirit beings can't keep you from the love That's of God. That's right. That's right. Whether they're good spirit beings or evil spirit beings, yeah. angels are powerful. But they ain't powerful enough to separate you from God's love. There's not one angel, even if it was so inclined, amen, because the angel wouldn't do it, amen. But they, even as powerful as they are, they can't separate you from God's love. And these principalities, those are those, those high-ranking uh, 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 demons. They can't separate you from God's love. God, the devil can send his, his toughest lieutenant and try to get you out of God's hand, and it wouldn't work. Right. Jesus said, I ain't lose not one of them, Father, that you gave me. Not one. Not one. Not one. Amen. And so God's not going to lose you because Satan's going to try to pull you out of it. Can't happen. Can't happen. Amen. Oh, he's going to try. He's going to try all kinds of things to try to get you to be separated from the, from the truth that God loves you, but it's not going to happen. Amen. So, so, not spirit beings. Death can't do it. Life can't do it. Spirit beings can't do it. And now he going to know power. No, that human be beings can't do it. Amen? Amen. I don't care how powerful they are. There's nobody in the government that can separate you from God's love. Amen. I tell you right now, I believe right now, if, 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 if you know, some government official came in here right now and said to you, you have to renounce your faith in Jesus Christ. 
We will look at him now and say, you got to get to step. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. I don't care how powerful right. you are. Yeah. I don't care you come here in a motorcade. Yeah. I don't care you got seals all over your car and stuff. And these, these seals of power. You ain't separate me from Christ. Amen. 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 That's right. The powers in school. They ain't separating you from Christ. Oh, yeah, you can say all kinds of things, but guess what? I'm going to be in the cafeteria and say, Lord, I thank you for this food that I'm about to receive. I bless you right now. You supply all my needs. And I give you praise, oh God, for supplying this food. May it nourish and strengthen my body in Jesus' name. You can't pray in school. The devil is a liar. Let me pray again. And God. Amen. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Can't separate me from the love of God. I love God. He provided my food. I'm praying in school. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. I'm praying on the job. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. I told this story years ago when I, used, when I was working in the city and my secretary bought me some mail that I was waiting for. And she gave me the mail. I said, Praise the Lord, that I was waiting for it. She said, Praise the Lord, it's just the mail. I said, Listen, it's just the mail to you. It's praise the Lord to me. Amen. Come on, somebody. Powers, amen. No matter how powerful the office may be, they can't separate you from God's love. That's right. right. Amen. Watch this. No things present. Whatever you're going through right now, as hard as it is, it can't separate you from God's love. No things to come. Some people sit there thinking, well, things might get worse. No matter how bad they may get. Yes. No matter how bad the future may be. Oh my goodness, people are, do you know how many people are selling fear? Mm. Watch these commercials closely. Yeah. Yeah. Watch your junk mail closely. The stuff that they send to you, they're trying to get you to buy stuff because they say, oh, if your pipes break that in the street, it's not going to be the government's going to fix it. You're going to have to fix it. Yeah. So you need to get some pipe insurance. Yeah. Yeah. You ever get that thing in the mail? Yes, yeah. They're selling fear. Yes, they are. <laughs> They're trying to tell you something bad going to happen to you. Well, watch this. If something bad happens to me, God ain't running away from me. He's going to be right there. That's right. That's right. He still owns a cat on a thousand hills. Yes. Amen. So no matter what someone tries to put in your head about the future, that the future may, may look bad, the future may look bleak, even... If it happens, Amen. it can't separate you from God's love. So not things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth. There's, listen, the highest high heavens, the deepest sea, there's nothing anywhere there and in between that can separate you from God's Amen. love. Amen. Come on, somebody. God got us covered from top to bottom. Yes, he yes, says, yes, go yes. as deep as you want. I'm still underneath. Yes, right. <laughs> I'm still holding you up. Yes, Amen. Yes. Go as deep as you want. My hand is still underneath you. Yes, Amen. Yes. I don't care how long you sit. Yes. My hand is still underneath you. Yes, Amen. Yes. Can't separate. The deepest thing can't separate you from my love. Yes. You can sink to your lowest level. I still got you. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I still got you. Yes, Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Nothing yes. can separate us yes. from the love of God. God. Amen. God. Amen. 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 Nor height, nor depth, and then he says, nor any other creature. Mm -hmm. In other words, nothing that could ever be created. Spiritually, in the spirit realm or the natural realm. There's nothing man can create. There's nothing that, see, something, you don't know where this world is going with technology and everything. Yeah, yeah I, I don't. I really don't. I, maybe one of them days we're going to have our robot walking all around the place. <laughs> Amen? You know, the, the little red thing in there, or the blue. You know, you know, that's what it had, right? Yeah. And when they were mad, they were, they were bad eye robots. They had the red in there. <laughs> right? <laughs> maybe that's the future. I don't know, but here's the thing. I don't care. Because there ain't no robot walking around that's going to be able to separate me from God's love. Yes. I don't care what they try to do. Amen. There's nothing yes. that... So Paul says, I am persuaded of all this. And you know how he's persuaded of this? Because he knows something. God loved him and always would love him. Yes. And that's what God wants you and I to know today. 
to come out of this thing and be encouraged and be strengthened in our spirit. God loves me, and he always will. Yeah. There's nothing that can separate me from the love of God. And God is inviting us. When you feel a little bit down and put upon and a little bit doubtful, go back to these scriptures and encourage yourself in the Lord. Yes. Go back and read this and say, nothing is going to separate me from the love of God. I don't care. It's not hard problems, not hard people, not hard situations or circumstances, not my own imagination, not attacks from the devil, not people in power, nobody and nothing. Amen. It's going to separate me from God's love. Yeah. And now that I know that, I can face whatever I'm going through yes. with confidence. Yes. Yes. That's right. Amen. Yes. Because nothing is going to separate God from me. Yes. Yeah, man. So I can walk into the lion's den like that. Yes, sir. I can walk into the fiery furnace. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm not careful to answer you, O King Nebuchadnezzar. I'm not bowing down. Amen? And don't you know that it's that same confidence and that same love that allowed Jesus to go to the cross? Amen? Because he knew God loved him. Amen. That's why the greatest pain for him is when God, during that time when the darkness covered the world, had to turn his back on the Lord as, yeah. the, as all the sins of mankind went on to his son's body. That's right. That was the most painful thing for him. It wasn't the whips, as painful as it was. It wasn't the scourging, it wasn't even the nails. Yeah. It was the separation uh -huh. from God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It was the separation. Yeah. And, and, and so because of that, the word of God let us know, glory to God, that Jesus went through that so you and I don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. He went through that so you and I will never have to Thanks. experience Thanks, being separated Thank from God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And that should fill us with confidence. Praise the Lord Jesus. Read one scripture and we'll leave it. I'm going to ask you to turn with me to this one, though. This is in 1 John chapter 4. 1 John. Not the gospel, but 1 John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. We all have it? Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's look at verse number 17. It says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Amen. Amen. And here's the thing. And God loves us with a perfect love. Yeah. Amen. I don't care how much a person may love their spouse or their family member or their friend. It is an imperfect love if it's a human love. Amen. Yeah. But God's love is perfect. Amen. Amen. God perfectly loves you. There's no blemish in it. There's no imperfection in it. There's no weakness in it. Yes. And verse 18 of 1 John chapter 4 says, Perfect love casts out fear. And so God loves us perfectly, but we have to receive that perfect love. And that's yes. what those scriptures and moments are so much about. Mm -hmm. Nothing can separate me from the perfect love God has for me. And if I allow his perfect love to saturate my heart and my mind, then fear gets cast out. Amen. I'm not afraid of anything anymore. That's right. I can walk into a new situation with confidence. Yeah. I can walk into an uncertain future with boldness. Yeah. I can walk wherever it is I'm going, whether I'm familiar with the place or not, yes. and have no fear. 
I can give that presentation tomorrow, and I know I'm going to be okay. Amen. I can go on that job interview, and I know I'm going to impress. Yes. I can take on a new assignment. I can start the new ministry. I can build the business. I, I can quit the job and start a new career. I can do something. Why? Because God's perfect love casts out the fear. And so many of us, what's keeping us back from God's best is fear. Fear that something's not going to work. Fear about what's going to happen. Hallelujah. Fear about this. Fear of failure. Yes, sir. Fear of being uh, ashamed. Fear of making a fool of yourself. Fear of this. Fear of that. And the devil is peddling this fear 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Amen. The devil even tries to peddle this to you when you're sleeping. He's trying to do this, but let God's perfect love saturate your heart. You realize there's nothing in this earth above or in the he uh, heavens above, earth below. There's nothing that can separate God's perfect love from me. And let that now wash that fear away. And you go forward and you do and be and take all the, the things that God is calling you to and say, Lord, I'm up to this now. I don't care, big or small, I'm ready to do this act. Why? Because you are with me, you love me, and you always will. Amen. Be encouraged by it, amen? Amen. I know we often say God loves me, and we know God loves us, but do you know how much? I'm not standing up here and saying, I know how much God loves me. I don't. I don't. But the, but 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 the point is is to press into it just more and more and more. Yeah. That's all. Amen. It's not about trying to get the answer and get to the end. There's no measuring stick. But just keep pressing into it and realize He loves you so much that you're never going to get to the end of it. Amen. Amen. Amen? If you if you start just walking in God's love now for the next twenty years, you'll never get to the end. That's right. For the next fifty years, you'll never get to the end. For the next thousand years, you'll never get to the end. You'll still be, you just be walking in love. Amen? Is that a song? Walking in love? I don't know. <laughs> but you can walk in love, amen? All the best. That's how God wants us to be. He wants us to walk in love every day of our life. <coughs> in his perfect love. And we will not be fearful. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let's stand on our feet and pray today. Glory to God. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, we give you praise. Yes. Hallelujah. That there is nothing and no one that can separate us from the love of Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. There's nothing that can separate us, that can create distance between yes. you and us. Yes, There's nothing and no one that can nothing take God. us out nothing. of your hand. Yes. And so, Father, we bless you right now that we are surrounded by your perfect love. Yes. You said, God, that perfect love casts out fear. So we are not afraid right now. Yes. No matter what we have going on, no matter yes. what the week or the month or the rest of this year may bring, God, we have a renewed boldness in our spirit. We have a renewed strength in our heart. Yes. We are now straightening, our, straightening up our backs and our feet. Yeah, we are planting Lord. firmly on the ground. And we're looking ahead, God, without fear for the future, without fear for tomorrow. Yes. Because, God, we know that you are with us, that you love us. Yes, and you will always be with us. Yes. Paul said that I am persuaded. That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature can ever separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Father, we give you praise right now. Father, I thank you that your love is upon the young ones and the old ones. I thank you right now, God. That everyone under the sound of my voice, that you are looking down upon them right now in the name of Jesus with loving eyes. I thank you, God, that you are giving them looks of approval 
in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now, God, that you have a good plan for their life, oh God. A plan to bless them, a plan to elevate them, a plan to use them in the kingdom of God. I thank you, God, that you are raising up mighty families in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, that you are blessing marriages, oh God, those that exist and those that are to come. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that businesses are being blessed, that businesses are being birthed. I thank you right now that the young people are performing excellently in school in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you right now that good success is following your people right now in the name of Jesus because the love of God is saturating our lives. And so, Father God, we thank you right now. Hallelujah for this love of God. Nothing shall separate, hallelujah, me from the love of God. Nothing shall separate my wife from the love of God. Nothing shall separate my children from the love of God. Nothing shall separate your people from the love of God. Your love is here to stay. Glory to God. And we give you the praise and the thanks yes, yes. for your everlasting love. Now, God, let us rise up in faith. Yes. Hallelujah. You said faith yes. works by love. So let us rise up in faith. Yes. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And boldly go forward into yes. the future. Yes. Knowing that every step we take is ordained by God. Yes. Glory yes. to God. And that you will be right there with us. Yes. Through thick and thin, yes, through, through the hard times, through the good times, yes. through the pain, yes. and through the, the joy and the exaltation. You will yes. be with yes. us. So, Father, let us go. And let us go now. Yes. That the will of God may be done in our lives. Yes. And others may know that you are a God who loves us yes. and always will. Yes. We give you the praise and we give you the thanks. In Jesus' name, in Jesus amen. amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God.